What a terrific, silly season it was. Now, we're not done yet. There's still going to be summer activity, but so many storylines, trades, the draft, signings, the biggest of them all, Steven Stamkos gone from Tampa, four years in Tennessee. What happened? Let's discuss. We love discussing with Steve Coolius, host on Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio. My partner here noticed something cool. Listen, those two images over your right, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> Get us in there. Yes. I'll tell you what, yes. Tony, Cooley, Tony and I are just vain enough to say the following. You've gone from mere friend of the show <laughs> to, to mainstay status. Yes. Like your NHL network fixture at this point. We appreciate you so much. Don't don't show Bill Pito this. I'll tell you right now, he is going to be pissed. So this was an idea DJ and I came up with. This is beautiful. This will not leave my wall. These pictures are up oh, all summer, gentlemen. We I appreciate bet you, you. I bet you say that to all the personality. Uh, by the way, just send in the receipt for Getty Images. We'll make sure you get squared away. Absolutely. <laughs> and I've been waiting to hear you address this one. Stamkos leaving the Lightning. How did he wind up with the Predators? What happened? Well, full disclosure, our grandmothers are related, so we're like ninth cousins or whatever that is. So um, the real truth is they didn't want him anymore. You heard him say ill will at the end. Did they string him along? It's the team's right to move off a player they might think is aging. It's the fans' right to be upset. It's his right to be disappointed. But if they wanted Jake Gensel more, and that's what they did, then they made their decision. We've heard stories of low ball offers and everything else. I think we should have known this gentleman at 919 day one of training camp last September when he addressed the media, and that was a foreshadowing. Remember, Stu, grade yeah. 12 English, yeah. a foreshadowing. We didn't pay attention to Weathering Heights. <laughs> no. We should have paid attention to Weathering Heights. It was a foreshadow, and that's what it was. Yeah. Amazing. Nobody, Amazing. Uh, you're exactly right. We should have put more stock in that. But uh, And you don't need to sell me on Nashville of all spots to land. It's been home for me since going back to 2001 when I signed there. But there's a lot going on with that roster. Let me ask you this, Cools. Uh, just in terms of the other teams out there at the deadline that really addressed some key needs who stood out to you um, July 1 and beyond uh, in terms of their free agency acquisitions well a little bit before and a little bit after right because it's a, in, all encompassing but I like what the Boston Bruins did I love their big four in the back end they get Elias Lindholm he's not a true number one Matthew Potra will he be the second or third you got Charlie Coyle Zach it could go over so we've seen the best of Lindholm in Calgary. We've seen Zadorov be a big brute, and I know, Stu, you love him with the way he throws his body around there. I, I, I like what the Bruins did, and they're better on the back end. They've also got some skill further down their lineup, and what they did up front, they needed to make a move. Really, it was kind of losing DeBrusque and adding Zadorov and Elias Lindholm. I like it, and I like what the Devils did. Markstrom earlier with mm -hmm. the trade, and then bang, bang. Pesci, bang. Brendan Dillon, bang. Stu and Tony, heavier in the playoffs. Harder hockey. Oh, I got to go to the danger area. And what did Jack Hughes say last year once? We couldn't get a save. Oh, dagger through the heart. That one hurt. They got their goalie. Two years, six million. Money retained by Calgary. Bruins, Devils, very happy gentlemen. Well, what do you think? Are you on the bandwagon that these two teams have improved themselves and checked some big boxes? Yeah, we were actually just agreed. We're talking on this show about the, those very devils, you know, step back last year, no question. Goaltending and the decor had a lot to do with that, given the, you know, the, the, the changes from a prior year. But I think this group is really poised to do some great things this year based on those ads, no question. And at the other end of the spectrum, teams that left you scratching your head, teams that left something to be desired, take it away. Well, New York Islanders, Tony. No splash? No splash? No Nikolai Ehlers? No other move? I mean, Anthony Duclair? I mean, I, is, is, is that enough? I mean, when you look at the lineup, there's, um, it's mediocre. It, it's average. The Islanders had already been a team that lacked that wow. Yeah, Barzell to the wing, Bo Hor Horvat in. We've seen that now for a little while, but it's not enough. There needs to be something else to take a 2-1 game you're losing and make it a 3-2 victory. And I don't think the Islanders with these soft moves 
have been able to do that. Now, we still have silly season time and trade time to do something else, but the Bruins went bang. The Devils went bang, bang. The Islanders, no splash, and I, I really don't know if the Sabres are better off either. They they bring in Jason Zucker, Ryan McLeod. It's about winning now. They gave up a top prospect, somebody that the Oilers think is going to be a factor moving forward. The Sabres, I think, are just like card sharks. Higher or lower than an eight. I'll freeze, Tony. Because Great I reference. don't know if they're better. So, so good. That's where I am with the Sabres. Um, Sabres Islanders, uh, no splash. Boston Devils, very nice. <laughs> High five. <laughs> He's amazing. Every time we listen to you, we're entertained. Stop. And Stop. he brings the pop. There really is something to that. What struck me in talking with Thomas Hickey about it, the Islanders so close to the cap, teams in a cap world have to navigate that. Yeah. A real challenge for the Isles this time around. Well, and, and Lamarillo, Lamarillo has demonstrated a guy that's, uh, you know, capable of navigating issues like that. Very judicious and deliberate in his approach. But I'm with you. Th going back three-plus years now, this is a group, a roster that needs some pop up front. I don't know that they have the depth. Sorry, sorry the, the, the depth and the, the, you know, the top six kind of offensive punch to really compete in earnest uh, for a top eight spot. It's never too early to ask you for your final prediction. What about your prediction of the night? Well, we end with this. Reminder, don't tell Bill about the pictures on the wall. <laughs> and this is my last prediction. You will not see me for a long, a long, long time after this segment. I will disappear into the Muskoka woods <laughs> only to be seen again in September. I got my Molson. I've got some waterworks, and that is it, gentlemen. Thank you so much for having me on all season long. Our Thanks. pleasure. Thanks so much, Cool. We will see you on the other side.